So, Ms. Bernard. Oh, so yes. The, <laughs> the premise of this is primarily, um, it's, it stemmed from a lot of our players, a lot of people coming back home from uh, overseas in college <clears throat> and not having any opp opportunities or confused on what to do the next step might, might be. Um, and I brought you in. <clears throat> I brought you in primarily because we spoke about it last week. Have like a referee stuff. Um, I know that some of our players, <clears throat> if I'm dying, it's okay. Some of our players are um, interested in doing that. And maybe you can talk about that. Um, I know that Boogie may be interested in it because she has to leave in like 20 minutes. <clears throat> so can you tell her the steps that she would need to do that? <laughs> uh, where is she located? <laughs> Corona. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay, so I don't know what... Um, I'm a referee, basically. Uh, we're a referee. This is my – I just finished my fifth season, I think. Wow, I went fast. My fifth season, um, I started the summer I came home from college from playing basketball. Knew I wanted to stay in basketball, didn't want to coach. So I basically started refereeing. Um, it's a lucrative field, very lucrative. Um, and it's fun. You stay around the sport, you stay around players. You know, one of my best friends is Corey, and she's in his chat. Um, there's a, multiple fields and ways to go into it. Right now, I'm. we were talking last week about if they're going to do a virtual classroom for people to get their, their license, I mean, their certificates to become referees. Um, I'm both boys and girls certified. I got boys certified first, and then I got girls certified the following year. Um, and then... You don't have to be certified to work in college. Just letting everybody know that. But it just looks good that you're certified. Like if you wanted to support referee college basketball, women's college, to get certified girls and understand the rules. Because in New York City, we, New York State actually, we are governed underneath the um, NCAA college rules. So it works hand in hand with each other. So it is an easier kind of transition as far as like if you're out of state, you referee boys federation rules, and then you have to learn the women's rules as well. Um, the class starts in, I think August or September. Um, and it's about, I think 10 weeks, not long. Um, and basically you get, it's in the classroom. You go to class twice a week. Um, understand the rules you go over test questions you go over the rule book you break down everything they also some of them some of the classes may like um go through plays and stuff and you do a floor exam um which is a lot easier this year was the first year that they actually made the test open for everybody which you just you don't even have to go take the class you could just take the test and if you pass the test over, I think it's 85, then you automatically get your New York State refereeing certification. For the boys, if you want to referee boys, it's different. Um, and I can have the lady for the New York State, I mean, who does the, uh, the city, I can have her email you guys once they, um, once they tell us the dates and whatever the times, or Mark can just send, I can send Mark her email Mm -hmm. And then he'll just shoot it out to you guys. Okay. Um, basically, and then once you pass the test, they typically say you have to do JV first. If you guys know me, I didn't do JV at all <laughs> for, <laughs> for, um, for girls high school. I went straight to varsity. Um, which, cause I took the floor test and I was refereeing already. So they already knew that. And then uh, you can referee PSAL, which is the public school. We might not have a season this year, actually, because of the pandemic. Um, but PSAL High School and Catholic School. But there's another board called MAGBO. MAGBO is cool. They have their own kind of classes and workshops and trainings. They're cool. It's a cool board to be on. I'm not on it because I'm tired of paying dues. But it's a cool board to be on, but MAGBO is not state certified. In order for you to be able to referee girls Catholic school and PSAL, well, PSAL, you can referee MAGBO. Go and go under MAGBO because the lady in charge of MAGBO, she's also in charge of um, PSAL. 
But in order for you to referee Catholic high school and actually want to go to states, you have to get state certified. Um, and then the test is usually like $100. And, and it's usually like, I think around October. Yeah, October. And then, so can you, can you speak about um, when you say lucrative, now, I know that the PSAL pays at a certain rate. What What is the highest level that you are at right now? What level can you do? Can you do WNBA games? Well, so, no, not right now. Um, the highest level I referee is college, Division One. Uh -huh. um, I'm in the American East. And each game, it depends. Depending on your tier, uh, a thousand to, depending on your, your, your tier and your Travel distance, mm -hmm. a thousand to fifteen hundred. That's America East. That for one game is that much. Um, the I think one of the lowest conferences, if I'm not mistaken, is Ivy League. I think they're like eight hundred a game or like six hundred a game, something like that. Oh my god! But you got to remember, <laughs> the amount of money you're making, you also are going to put in too. So the hustle season is during the summer. Um, where you're going from park to park, you're refereeing um, multiple games. And in the beginning, you're going to probably make like $30 a game. Some tournaments is like, depending on the tournament, $60 a game, um, 65 depending. But um, you also have to invest into yourself like you invest into anything. You got to go to camps during the summer. You have to stay in shape. Um, you have to carry yourself into a, like a, it's a more professional kind of setting. Initially, when I started, I was like wild hair, long nails, everything, lashes, everything. I had to simmer down to being more professional, braids and a ponytail. And, you know, my tattoos got to cover it up depending on your level. Um, as far as WNBA, you have to go the route of, you first go into getting scouted by Al Batista. He's uh, one of the scouts for the New York, like the tri-state area. Mm -hmm. Al Batista, he does the NBA. You go to grassroots. Once you go into grassroots, like I invited last year, didn't make it through. But you go into grassroots, you referee for a weekend. It's like a camp. A couple of friends in like an hour. And then um, if you get invited to that, you go into the G League. Then the G League, you either go into – um, WNBA, stay in the G League, or you have opportunity for the NBA. Right now, they're trying to hire more women officials. And typically, excuse me, they're trying to hire more African-American uh, ethnicity kind of officials, you know, the minorities. Um, but it's a certain kind of physique you have to have, and you, it's a certain kind of look you have to maintain. You know, you have to look the part. Yeah, you do have to look it. Um, that's why a lot of officials stay on the college level because I'm gonna be honest, refereeing WNBA is cool, G League is cool, but if that's that's solely your only job. Once you get into the G League, it's like a lot of people that's their only job because you're traveling city to city. You have a game one day, that's three days of your week. You go mm -hmm. in the night before, you have a game that day, you do breakdown, then you leave out the morning of, and then you probably have another game after that, you know? Um, what else did you want me to tell you? So when, um, to get on the board and to get assigned, you would have to be kind of cool with the assigner and have him or her connect you to different games and stuff what like that. What kind of board are you talking about? The, the referee board. No, so... Okay, um, the referee board, New York State board, girls board, you you take the test, you pass. Your name goes, you your name goes, or you take a, a floor test. If you do New York State, you, have, you take a floor test for PSAL. Uh -huh. Now, PSAL is a, a signing board for a public school athletics league. That league, you make $125 a game, mm -hmm. okay? The basketball is... Developing. Okay. Um, and also, your name also gets passed around, if you're really good, to Catholic school. 
Catholic school, you make 115 a game. And the competition is a little bit better. Um, and the guy name is Fred Support. Fred Support and his wife. Um, I met them at a camp by from Cornell. Cornell is one of the PSAL signers. He's really cool. Um, and if they like you, they'll give you games. If, if you're a mentor, you gotta, you gotta find a mentor in this program, like in this refereeing business as well too, that somebody can advocate for you. Um, one of my mentors is Heather Brown. Um, so, you know, she helped advocate for me on the college level. Um, she's helped put, like send me information and put me with people that help navigate me into the right directions as well, too. Um, but there's a lot of basketball. There's a lot of basketball. Would you uh, like the test without uh, the class? Can you pass the test without the class? Yeah, do you think so? Yeah, you could take – you could – yeah. There's, um, there's ways. You could read the rule book. <laughs> and if you understand the rules in the rule book, then you're really liable to pass the test. D not trying to go to class. No, I'm not. <laughs> so, I'm, it's so funny because this year there's a lot of walk-ins and that passed. Yeah. If you don't want to go to the class, it's fine. There, there was a lot of walk-ins um, that passed the test this year. And they get a patch? They get a patch right then and there or they come to the mail type of thing? Well, New York, State, New York State, we don't get patches for girls. For boys, for boys, you have to, for boys, if you don't want to take the test, I mean, if you don't want to take the the class, mm -hmm. you have to go to um the Brook Brooklyn has the open the walk in test. Iable is harder. The boys test is a lot harder, but you don't get your patch until you you can buy a patch actually <laughs> for Iable. You can buy a patch, so it's not like you have to. You have to take pass the test, but I able patches you only must be worn during games that are signed by, like a high school, a high school assigner. Like a brimmer or or. Um, so like PSAL Catholic high school boys. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. That's it. You can't wear your I able patch anywhere else. Because you have to remember, you're insured by so when you pass your test you now become insured under like if you take the boys test is i able you're insured under i able so if anything is sanctioned by i able then somebody nobody can sue you that's why they don't want you to wear the i able patch gotcha yeah so when you came back home you said that you were in a transition point moment also why, why did you not continue with professional basketball or was that an option for you no, I wasn't that good. Um, <laughs> uh, professional basketball, didn't want to do it. I came home, um, studied sports management, and I, I knew I wanted to do something in sports still. And I was working at my aunt's hair salon, wasn't utilizing my degree at all. Uh -huh. And I met this guy named Joe in, um, at LA Fitness. He had a referee shirt on. And I was like, oh, I want to be a referee. And this is a time where Joe's class was um, – at St. Clair's, like, so there's many people who have classes. Uh -huh. um, I went the route of that. I met a lot of people through that route, and I don't say that route was bad, because I, like, those are, like, my, that's, like, my family. I say if you really, like, want to be put in the right positions um, to go the the real, the real class way, the New York State certified, the New York class, state class, um, IABLE classes, you know, if that's what you really want to do. If you don't want to go to a class, there's walk-ins that you can do. You just don't want to waste your $100 and take the test and be like, damn, because I didn't pass it the first time. Mm. I didn't pass it. So the second time I took it, I passed it. So that's, that's the thing. Like, but the, And you're also – refereeing world is so small that your network with people if they somebody sees that you're a good female official they'll be like yo what's your number i got games here I, I can utilize you you know and then also on the on the um college level one of the huge assignments she has not conferences debbie williams 
she she does a referee to um a play at a referee camp every year. And that camp is usually at Cornell's Cornell's um camp in June. Um at St. John's. And she's usually there and she works hands hands on with players that are transitioning into referees or players that want to they don't know if they really want to referee, but they're she's linking them up with top referees that are college referees who are former players as well, too. So that's somewhere that they, we can plug them into if they're interested in that. Yeah. Plug into that. And that's yeah. Cornell Hampton. You're referring to Cornell Hampton, correct? Yep. Um, so I should just reach out to him and maybe do Debbie Williams, you said her name is? Yeah. Then I don't think he's having his camp this year because of the whole corona thing. Right. But every year she's at his camp because Cornell works for the Big East as an um, observer. Mm -hmm. That's his boss. So if, if, you know, and one thing I say is you don't ever want to burn bridges in this business either because everybody knows everybody. Like, legit. Players, coaches, referees, everybody knows everybody. Right. Any, any questions, anyone? Mm -hmm. Let me take Angie and ask her. Mm -hmm. it, um... Yeah, that's basically it. Uh, I think the, the biggest thing is just providing you guys with opportunities that you can go into that. And Imani's going, Ms. Tatum's going to talk later about um, her transition to the um, to being an a academic advisor for Manhattan College. Um, but she's then, that's a transition also. That's somewhere you could get, stay, around, stay around the game and also help out the team that she just graduated from um, as soon as we finish with the referee stuff. So nobody has any questions on the refereeing? How long did it take you before you got to um, D1? From the time um, last year was my first year in Division One. My my uh, my path was faster than a lot of people. Um, my first year of high school, I think, I started refereeing championship games. The second year of high school, I got picked up Division Three and Division Two. I got hurt, injured, and then. Um, the third, yeah, my fourth year, I got picked up, Division One. Some people get picked up two years, a year. Mm -hmm. it, it just depends on you. It depends on how much work you're going to put into it. My, my, my downfall was always um, my weight. Uh, you have to maintain a certain weight, you know, look within the business. So my second and third year, I was like, why am I not getting picked up? And then somebody was like, how about you just lose some weight, you know? I was like, all right. Pray like that, they said it? <laughs> well, no, it wasn't like that. It was like, how about you, how about you step away the table, from the table a few times, you know? Your ass is looking a little too big in your pants. That's what the conversation was. Okay. And then, um, you know, I, I lost some weight because my goal was the NBA. Uh, but then, you know, sometimes your path goes a little bit outwards you know so it took you four years so i think the fact that you've been in like the hood tournaments and you've done the, the that definitely helps you also it makes you sharpen your skill you've done a janice tournament and in, in west fourth and all that stuff mm -hmm. um Aaliyah said that you never called for made any calls with her but that's beside the point <laughs> um she can't she can't have a mic on but I think um, I think that all of these young ladies here, right here, I think they would be outstanding referees. Yeah, I'm sure. Anyone have tattoos? Yeah. Where's yours? Whew, girl. My whole body. <laughs> Wear a whole bunch of makeup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Long sleeve in the summer. Well, well, summer summer is fine. Summer is fine. Oh yeah. He's doing what? <laughs> summer is fine, but. Uh, there. If you want to go into the college circuit, you, you yeah, the tattoos. Dee Dee, gotta... I don't know if you know um, Dee Dee Simmons. Yeah, yeah. Jersey. That's what she was telling me. She was like, the the higher she went, like the more she had to cover her tattoos. He's got to get covered. This right here mm -hmm. has to get covered. On oh, underneath your wrist. Yeah, when you report, you see this. Yeah, yeah. You don't want it to be seen. So what do you have? Foundation on? Or you just put um ace man. Yeah, or something? some makeup. 
You put makeup on? Mm -hmm. So it's dripping down your arm? No, no right. you, you, gotta you, the, you gotta buy the, the tattoo makeup. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, um, damn, they, they just pushed the uh, Hall of Fame ceremony back. Um, that's it. I don't have any more questions for the young lady. Do you guys have any questions for her? Yeah. You're free to stay. I know you were busy, and, and I appreciate you stopping by. Um, that's it. If you want to stay, you can hang out. We're going to talk shit about you because you didn't make any calls for us. But of cool. course, it's the norm. Wait, okay. talk to anybody, so, period. I would like to get the contact information. I don't know if you did that, but... What? No, we. I'll give it to you. Yeah, you want, Mark, yeah Mark, Is it okay? Uh, is it okay if I give him your phone number? That's fine. Or I put it in a group chat or something like that. That's fine. Okay, I, I can put it Tell in this Aaliyah chat. Tell Aaliyah to reach out to Debbie. Aaliyah, reach out to Debbie Williams. Me, Debbie Williams? Yes. <laughs> tell her you want a referee. Debbie Williams, who's that? The 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 Biggie song uh assignment. Oh. She don't know her. Oh. Yeah, because um Dee, Dee was the first Dee, Dee reached out to her when she was overseas and that's how she made the referee to um the referee to the play at a referee camp because of Dee. Dee. Really? Yeah. Because Didi told her she wanted to become a referee and she was like, she wanted to find a platform that she can help players transition to referees a little bit more easier. Like Didi's route was easier for her. Mm -hmm. And a lot of you, if you referee, if you play Division One basketball, it's going to be a lot easier for you to get into the Division One circuit as well, too, because of your face and you're more known on that circuit, you know. And it's, as long as you can referee and you have a feel for the game, it's a lot easier. She wrote Didi, I think, her first year she got picked up, or her second year she got yeah, picked up. I was about to say she got picked up quick. Yeah, her first year, second year she got picked up, Division One. So it's 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 all about who you know, where you played, all of that. Well, I just text uh Boogie, I just text you. Yeah, I just got it. You got it, Wait, and Lee, I just you text you. Denise, I'm coming to you now. No. <laughs> I'm coming to you now. Well, thank you. Go back to your day. We're gonna we're gonna finish up our stuff. Thank you. All right, no problem. Thank you. Thank no you. problem. Thank you. Uh... Corey, what's up? How was your transition to back to the real world from overseas? Because you went to a a, a a small school, not necessarily a predominantly basketball powerhouse. How did you? What was your transition like? Um, so like going overseas or coming back home after overseas? When you going overseas the first time. Um, it was actually easy. I mean, my last year, I've started all four years. So then my last year, we became a really good team. We played a lot of Big Ten schools. Mm -hmm. And um, after I went to the Final Four combine thing they have every year, which they didn't have it this year, of course, which sucks. I met my agent and like on graduation day, like the day I walked across my, my stage, I had like three teams, four teams like contacting me to sign. So I think it was pretty easy. My first year, it was the second year that was hard because you go overseas your first year, you know, you're still in college mode, but it, they don't want that rookie college mode over there, you know? So after my first year, I couldn't find a job the first half. I mean, yeah, I couldn't find a job my, the first half of the season. So I worked at Enterprise, rent a car. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, it was a good job. I liked it, but I mean, I think it snowed one day and I was like, oh, I can't take this anymore. I had to shovel the car. Out. I was like, oh, I'm done. So then uh, I fired my agent. I got a new one and I've been with him ever since. So, I mean, it, it's been a roller coaster ride, but, but I mean, for the most, for the most part, I've been kind of coasting. So I'm, I still, no, like, I wasn't able to get to like the Euro cup level or anything like that, but I mean, I'm content. Now, when you come back, when you when it's all said and done, what's what's next for you? Cause you're still overseas. Yeah. Um. Actually, I'm still trying to figure that out because there's a lot going on with the overseas world right now because of the pandemic. So you know, I'm I'm like hoping for the best, but I'm expecting the worst. So I mean, I've just been. Uh, I want to get my real estate license. I've 
redid my resume. I was with New Heights last year as an operations manager. So I think that would help me get into like, you know, a college coaching director of ops, you know. Dobo. Yeah, Dobo, little everything. Have you considered going back to Cleveland State and getting it working there? No, 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 no. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> um, they had a lot of scandals with the other the other like teams, and <laughs> they went through five athletic directors in the last five years. I've graduated, so they're not really stable, and they take a lot of budget cuts. So, gotcha. I mean, their Dobo was making twenty thousand for the whole year. Wow. So, uh, I mean, that's not even living <laughs> in Ohio. <laughs> um, why, if you, you want to get into real estate, right? If you want to get into real estate, I would say do it right now, though, unless you ha will have time in the future. Because I don't know about New York, but Jersey um, classes are from like nine to three. Really? Uh, yeah, four days a week. I mean, you could take night classes, but it'll just take you a longer time to get it done. But, yeah, I heard about the night classes, but like, are there like, are you taking classes right now? Yeah, from from nine to three on from Tuesday to Friday. Okay, and like, what are the rules for that? Because I know like the pandemic. No, it's just uh, regular Zoom calls. Um, you just gotta stay on camera the whole time. We'll give you like five minute breaks every so often. But... Okay, that's dope. Okay, I'm gonna look into that. Sure. I really wanna do that. But, yeah. right, we're not gonna take everyone to time. Um, Miss um, Tatum, I know you're eating and you had food served to you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, your transition from um, Manhattan College to Manhattan College, how's that? And what did you want to do? What did you want to do before that? Um, before I started working in Manhattan College. Yeah. Um, I was I was like looking into playing. I was kind of on the fence of really what I wanted to do. Whether it was I was playing, or, like, I called it like starting to adult. Um, and I did have I did have like overseas opportunities. Uh huh. Um. But I just thought, I mean, I kind of had a different mindset. I feel like people go overseas and they want the experience. Um, for me, it was more about, yeah, the experience is cool, but being able to um, start a career and figure out the career path I want to like, go in, it was kind of the direction that worked for me. And in God's timing, like, I had lost my first uh, like offer in Luxembourg. And I had to get, I had got some offers in Germany. Um, and I was working undergrad in school for a department, um, which is where I work now. I had been working undergrad there. And the guy, the athletic advisor, had left the position as I was figuring out my contracts and going back and forth. Um, and it seemed to be more fitting for me, um, just being able to stay home. Um, I really wasn't trying to struggle, honestly. So the job opportunity was an opportunity for me to get on my feet that I want to do. Um, and I felt like... There's no, like, no, like, I'm not saying it's not a terrible thing to go overseas, but just for me, I could, um, I just, you know, like, money. There's certain things that played into it. Um, then I felt, started working in. I love what I do. I'm an athletic advisor. Um, so I'm around athletics. I get to travel with the teams um, and all that. So being on the other side is cool, which is the part I enjoy. All right, now that's cool. Uh, anything else, anyone? Aaliyah? I got a couple questions. Um, uh, we'll start with you, Monty. Um, do you see yourself staying in that position? Like, do you see yourself moving up into something else, or do you like staying where you're at as the academic advisor? So, an academic and athletic advisor specifically, like, they're uh, who got some noise in the background? Um, Oh, athletic advising, there's but so much. I don't want to say there's not room for growth, but once you hit a certain playing field, there's no more going beyond that. Um, so my boss had taken another position um, about a year and a, a little over a year, and I was interim, like kind of running things for a little bit. And no, I don't see myself staying in athletics in athletic advising. Um, I want to move into like opportunity programs, and that's where we really get into like those nitty gritty kids that they were denied from the regular admit, and then they they t accept them into this program. They're like HEOP, like higher education programs. Um, they have like first generation programs, and those are the students that I really like vibe with, and I'm cool. I'm cool with the student athletes, obviously, because I know and they respect all that, but. 
there's a certain def demographic of students that I would intend on and want to work with. And those are like your lower income, your, you know, students that need that more and help and more support. So that's where I see myself kind of going in that direction. Okay, and you're on the the women's side, right? So I I advise half of the teams, yeah oh. I advise half the teams at Manhattan College women's basketball. I'm their primary advisor. Um, so I also have baseball, I have softball, I have women's soccer. So I have a couple of teams. We split them up. Um, but my the senior director, she works with men's basketball. We just split, obviously, our primary teams between the both of us. But I have about eight or nine teams. That That's a lot of kids. Yeah. Yeah, that is. And a lot of those kids, we really don't uh -huh. meet with them at, like, as much. Um, we meet with those kids that, are, that need the help, those to certain where your GPA is. Uh, those are the students that we really focus on. Those students are doing really well. We'll meet with them, but we really hone in on those. Like, so do you line up with tutors for the uh, for the place for the student athletes, or you just do primarily just check up on the grades? Um, so I set up a couple of resources in place with them for the semester. Um, uh -huh. so that could, that could go from, I don't actually set up the tutors for them. Like, we'll sit and I'll go through, and they'll set up the tutor. They just it's pretty tech savvy. They could just go on their phone and make appointments. So what I do more primarily is just make sure they're on track to graduate. So. So some students I meet with weekly, some students I meet with bi-weekly, some students I just, just come in and just chill in the office. So it just depends on the day and the workload. I mean, the most strenuous and like sickening thing about the job, and I, and I know I don't need to be in a negative connotation, is just going through the eligibility stuff, um, just because it's only two of us and certifying so many people is, is a lot. Um, so I would say that's probably one of the most difficult parts of the job and just it's just tedious because like it has to be a committee and everyone has to go through every single thing. Um, but nonetheless, it's, it's cool and I'm, I'm happy to be, you know, on the other side of the spectrum to kind of see how things are and like things I never really understand as a student. I understand now better from a different perspective. Now, you said you got you got lucky as far as falling falling into that opportunity. Um, are there, is there places that somebody can go find out? If those job openings are available or I mean I wouldn't say lucky I just started working you just have to check like what like typically student athletes don't have federal work study but they have student employment so I would like a lot of people think they can't work being a student athlete I worked like I was like after practice depending on how your schedule and how you worked it and certain stuff like I was able to get a couple hours um and then I was lucky I did grad school so you know just certain things kind of worked out. So I had been working there undergrad um, and the transition was easy because I was kind of everyone's helper. I was like helping people in this department, helping people in this department is all one center. So the transition after I had still been working and probably like two months later, the job had opened up. So I was like, you know what? Like, what do I have to lose? I know all the ins and outs of the, the, the center and what goes on. So if someone wants an internship opportunity, I would probably be like a GA position in like the support center or like athletic advising it's really not hard to find your niche um but yeah i would just be on the lookout and i know like certain schools do like they'll you could be a ga and they'll give you like stipends to do other work does that make sense like you could yeah. be a GA somewhere and then like for example you could go to st john's and help out there and they'll give you like a stipend there it just depends on the school you just have to be looking you know it's kind of specific to certain things so I think Aaliyah and Danasia finished their grad assistance uh, last program this year at Seton mm -hmm. Hall and UIC. So they have their stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to finish up. Yeah. Aaliyah, you had another question, Aaliyah? Um, for Corey, um, you said when you walked across the stage on graduation day, um, you had a couple offers already. Um, do you think? Uh, just based off of like how you got your your offers to go overseas, do you think they were they were based on your play? Like, did you know anyone? Like, how was this so easy for you to, to get overseas? Hey, you broke up at the end. What well, I feel like I'm delaying. You are. I I think she said um when you walked the, how, how did you already have the jobs lined up with people on you already? Because did you know anybody or was it just just your stellar play at Cleveland State? Um I don't know actually. I, mean, I think at the combine, like the uh the little combine that they had, I met a lot of people there. And that was a month before we graduated and the team I was on was pretty good. And um 
like a lot of factors played into my last year too because I had a really good senior year and the fact that that was out of my four years that was my best year because even my coach overseas when I went to Finland first he's like I was impressed that you guys won that many games you know for losing before and against certain competitions so I think just uh the latter I guess they do look at like percentages and stuff like that but I think like at the end, they just want a winner. Like, I don't know. I think it just had a lot to do with, like, the the winning. And then every year, like, we won more games. And every year, my stats got better. So I really think that had a lot to do with it. I think it also yeah. depends on – I think it also – sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. I think it depends on, like, the coaching staff, too. Like, especially for me, I felt like my coaching staff could have been more – like, they, they were involved in the process. But, like, right, you know – this is a goal that she's been setting, you know, this is something that we should work towards with her, you know, I feel like part of it was me doing it myself, a part of it was the coaches helping, but um, so I think just being, having that coaching staff and in that perfect situation is also helpful. Yeah. No, my coach was terrible, to be honest. Like, I was, I was like on her neck about it, like, hey, I want to do this. Hey, you know, I got this email about, you know, coming to the Final Four. And she's like, yeah, you know, I do know an agent. But then the agent she told me was like one of the worst agents you can have. I mean, she was no hope at all. But I think other, like uh, Kosha Boyle, I think she's uh, she was at Canusas when, when she recruited me. And she's at VCU now. I think she had a lot to do with it. She was very helpful. Even after I didn't commit to the school, she wanted me to, uh, she recruited me for her. So I stayed in contact with her throughout my whole college career. And even after college, I think she's a great coach and a great person. So I think she had a lot to do with it too. Leah. <laughs> is there uh uh is there I forgot her name, the coach at Cleveland State now. Was that your coach? Or they changed staff? Oh they changed staff. He's oh, they he, changed was staff. he was at D two. D two Oh okay, okay. Yeah. And okay, because yeah, I was at UIC and Cleveland State is in our conference. Yeah. Yep. Do y'all win? Girl bye. <laughs> 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 no, I'm weak. <laughs> you know what was going on. I don't know what's going on there, man. Now they they had a pretty solid season this year. I mean, they probably came like third, third place. Ooh. Cleveland State. Cleveland State, yeah, that's pretty decent this year. Oh, they were good. Okay, okay. Yeah, it was a senior. They had this. They had a senior. She was pretty solid. It was solid. Uh, I was in school too. I were? Yes. Uh, yeah, they've been hooping then. <laughs> okay, Corey, you said the tradition. <laughs> you said the tradition. <laughs> oh no, not at all. What? <laughs> they're like they're they're good kids. Like they don't wild out like I did in college. Like they don't go out. <laughs> they don't IDs. They're not getting in trouble with the police or nothing. Like they're like just straight and narrow. So I mean, I guess. Yeah, so we're going to cut that part out of the... Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you know, they're not experiencing college. They're just being hoopers, you know. There you go. They're not experiencing <laughs> other avenues of, of, of college. Yeah, like, yeah. But they're focused. They're focused. Okay. They're focused. There you go. Uh, Blues, any questions before we get out of here? You got to cover that tattoo. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. Um... Yeah, I liked it. Um, I, I'm going to bring a guest on once a week, somebody that's in a, that was an athlete, that did well, that's doing well in a different field, um, just so you guys can get, like, a different perspective. Because I know that um, – I think all you guys would be great referees, but I think you guys would be just as good as business people too. So that's something I want to bring on for you guys to help you guys as much as possible. Wait, wait, I have um, a question for Corey. I have a question for Corey. You can't be a referee. Now, you two you start arguing with different kids. I, I get too into the game. and I don't Yeah, you start looking at the plays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Book. Uh, how, Corey, like you said, like you, your second year, you didn't get a job until like halfway through the season. How did you stay like motivated and like wanting to keep playing after that? Honestly, I was content with working at Enterprise. I was making really good money there. But like I said, like with any job, you're going to have your hardships and stuff, but you really have to love your job to do it. And I think I hated my job and loved it at the same time. I was just like, all right, I want to go back to playing basketball. Mm -hmm. So, so I think that's what kind of motivated me. You know, I was like, all right, I'm going to fire my agent. Uh -huh. I'm going to get a new agent. I'm still going to work at Enterprise. But, I mean, 
whew, I just gotta stay motivated. I gotta go to workouts after work, you know, but I was really just trying to stay in shape. So, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I just like playing. That's all I can really say. But uh, I like so you. So you went over, you went back in December then? Oh, uh, yeah, December. Yeah, it was cool. And it was the first time I was leaving too, so. That was a different experience. Uh, was it was it hard to join a team in the middle of the season? Um, yeah, but during the during the Christmas break, they do fire a lot of people with injuries. They do do a lot of Christmas time, so. mm-hmm. it's just like signing before the season. The Christmas break. So, just finding a new team is pretty hard because they all fake. Cut that out too. Cut no. Out. That's real. <laughs> That's real. <laughs> That's real. When you go overseas, when you go overseas, Corey, like, what is your mindset like going in? Like, the reason why I say that is because I only played three months overseas, um, and basically I got cut because I was averaging thirty. I was averaging twelve, but they wanted thirty. So, okay. what is like your mindset going in? Like each. Here you go. Like, is it automatically? All right, I gotta come in, just get bucket. Nah, I'm because I've always been. Like, I've been like, I always What's been your like mindset? A role player. So like, with me, I got there. I was like, okay, like I'm that role player and that likes to win. So I, every year I come there, like, okay, I'm not about to be all the way out here losing, which I lost a lot. But um, I mean, that was that's my mindset. Just win as many games as you can and. I mean, be a, a factor to why you win in those games. Like, there'll be there'll be a game we'll win by like two points, and I'll make the last pass and have like five points, and they're like, "Oh, Corey," but it do depend on the club because the club you went to in Finland, they're like that with their guards, though. So you have to like know where you're going to. Like, I wouldn't go to a team that they need one person to average thirty because that's unrealistic. They did that in Turkey too. Yeah, that's that's not realistic though. My team was tripping this year about that, like. Yeah, like this is unrealistic. So, like with everything you went to, definitely should have did the research because when I was out there, they were tripping with their guards. They, their guards were averaging like thirty five, but they were losing, and they replaced the one that was averaging twenty eight. Like it was, it was crazy that year. Even Didi was out there that year. Yeah. I think we need to do something too that kind of prepares. Yeah. Um, the the college kids into agency and going overseas or even if you're being drafted by the WNBA because a lot of people don't know that your contract isn't guaranteed that you actually have to go to training camp and fight for possibly one spot um a lot of people don't know like how agents are snakes behind the scenes how they tell all of these type of lies so yeah um, Shannon Bobbitt had a, like, I think she has a book about it because you know how they kind of did her when she went to the league. Yeah, they, yeah. You didn't even talk about what they did to her. I didn't know she was talking about that, though. I didn't read the book, but I heard it was about that. So, Liz, you want want something for college, graduating college students about the real life of as far as um, uh, being a professional, whether becoming a WNBA overseas or whatever the case may be? Yeah, Yeah, just felt like I was on side it. I I, yeah. Don't, yeah, I didn't know anybody that really went through the process that I could talk to about. I didn't, I honestly, I'm not even going to hold y'all. I really just went with what I was comfortable with as far as the agent. Like he, the guy that I ended up going with, he was the only African-American that was um, looking to sign me. And I kind of, it was Jay's cousin too. So I just, I'm like, you know, he, he might have my back since that's, you know, one of my closest friends, but no, nah, I don't look like that. Like, it's so much. <laughs> like Sinead said, like, it's all about who you are. Like, my first team is American, but you don't have all those um, connections with teams overseas, you know? And now I have a European, I have a European agent that used to once be a president of a club. So even, like, even, like, uh, he's Greek. So, like, when players do go to Greece, they call it a, they say it's a charity contract because he's Greek and, you know, he gets everyone out there. But at the same time, that's like a guaranteed job with him, you know, because everyone knows him. So that plays a factor in that, too, for sure. It's always about who you know, for real. And and you're right, Danasia, because they don't know that they have a European agent and an American <laughs> agent. And an American right. agent, all he's doing is calling a European agent. That's and it. And the European agent's taking 2%, 3%, whatever <laughs> the number is. And he's got to give, or she's got to give a 
gonna send it back to that agent. You so then you lose you losing four points right off the rip. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Exactly. Talking about that. Yeah, I think if it's something where like there's a transition process where so we become knowledgeable on like the processes. Like she said, like no one tells us. Like no one told me. I figured it out. I did my own research. Like no college coaching coaches are invested in well, I mean, yeah, you play WNBA, you play whatever, but they're invested in their program because that's what that's what feeds and fuels them. So I think becoming knowledgeable on certain things would be beneficial to people who are obviously, you know, coming behind us. Well, I can say this. If, uh, granted, granted, this is our second week and we're on the ground floor. I would like to get it to the point where we can have the, go- the college graduates now in the next couple of weeks if they not have them come on board. And then we can speak to some of them also because um, they need to hear it from you guys because you guys are shit. Corey did five, six years. You, uh, Denaja did two or three. Uh, Aaliyah did a, a cup of water. Bugs is doing a cup of water. <laughs> Amaya, uh, Tatum didn't go over yet, but you know she had to couple weight. You know it's, it's different di- different levels you guys are at. That'd yeah. be something. And great we all got different involved. stories too about it. Right. Yeah, I, I think the more we talk about it, you know, and just keep bringing people on, keep adding you guys and more, adding some of your friends that you know, because a lot of my trainees now are graduating, like they're old now. Mm-hmm. So like, what's going to happen to the four year old McDonald's, the girl that was a McDonald's American four years ago, like? There's only 12 jobs on the NWNBA. There's only yeah, 12 it's a teams. Yeah, it's this year. <laughs> you, ain't cut, you, ain't even, you ain't even step foot on the floor. You ain't cut. I was about to say that. What's your thoughts on that? Because that's crazy. Oh. That's, that's, <laughs> that's insane. Yeah, I into Lavender, and she was saying how they're, like, cutting everyone because of how they're going to, like, do the season because they're, they're going to have to put out a lot of money because they want them all to stay in a hotel. They have to pay the referees. They have to pay the people who are working there. They're all like, they might as well not even. Have, they're gonna lose money. They they need to. Just and see that scared to come to uh, come to a determination too. Yeah. Why have you paid them? I said the NCAA is scared to come to a determination. They're leaving all decisions to schools and giving them a decision. Hey, the students could come back this time. Athletics yeah. is not having any decisions right now. They're waiting for the yeah, NCAA, but the NCAA is too scared because they're gonna. They don't want to mess up. But what's, what can happen is New York is in a different situation than Idaho. So a, a school in Idaho may be completely open. A school in New York, St. John's, for instance, they, they can't get in the gym. There's no rims on it nowhere. So who has an advantage now? The kid that comes to school in, in June 1st at uh, Idaho or the kid at St. John's? Like, it's kind of screwy because they left everything up into the state and the school. So it's kind of messed up right now. Where the players come from, like where they're from. Like, imagine Idaho, they have a – a New Yorker coming into play, you know, and she's a, a high risk to give it to everybody else, and the number skyrockets there. So, or can't even come over. Yeah, we got all travel restrictions too. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you just play? New Jersey, Connecticut, and New York teams? Mm-hmm. The big three. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, so I think this is a great second second episode. Um, 